Here we go with another review with the Pro Feedback members. These are actually the pros that you can get feedback from if you join our amazing, productive, wonderful platform, uh, which is Pro Feedback. It's something we launched actually this year. It's been really, really awesome. And it's been really cool to see our members not only submit you know one track when they get on the platform, but just come back the next month and submit again and see how they're doing. And this is actually one of the members that's done that. This is Mauricio uh, Savala. Sorry if I butchered your name, buddy. But this is a track that he actually submitted previously to one of our pros, actually to Scott here. Um, and he made the necessary adjustments, or at least how he felt that he improved it. So we're going to basically listen to this track now and hopefully give him some helpful tips, insights, notes, anything that can really be helpful for him. And for all of you guys watching, I hope you guys also take these tips and notes and apply them to your music, whatever genre you, you produce. If you produce music like this, even better. But you'll find that a lot of the things that we say in these videos can be applied to many different genres. So hopefully you guys are learning something as we get started. So let's have some fun and listen to this track called uh, Power Training. Here we go. Awesome, Mauricio. Really, really nice track, man. Very licensable right off the bat before we get into any notes or giving you any feedback. Um, you know, this kind of high energy, fun rock is an extremely licensable genre for everybody watching, okay? So a lot of my career, a lot of my catalog is exactly this type of music. So sports eats us up all over the place. Some advertising can do a lot of this. Um, reality shows can do a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, um, extreme sports stuff. There's there's so many different applications for this type of music. So I definitely think if this is something that's near and dear to your heart, you definitely know, uh, you just know from now on, this is a really, really licensable direction, especially in how you put this track together, man. Um, definitely focused. Definitely. What I love most about this track, I think we'll, we'll talk about some ways to improve it, but um, you did you did a great job of just adding as the track went along, right? Um, you added new elements, new leads, changed up the drums. You know, you kind of really every four, eight bars or so added something else to kind of keep the momentum moving along. So that's also just one of these golden rules that whatever genre you guys are producing in, you need to do something like this. And especially if, if you do your research and look into these libraries, go listen to their music and almost every genre, I can guarantee you every single genre, this is the common element you're gonna see. It starts off one way, then it builds, it's like Legos. It builds a new layer and then a new layer and maybe we go to a different section, but you'll constantly see the same element happening of, of building and constantly evolving as we go through it. So um, Scott, I'm gonna actually start with you, man, because I know that you'd reviewed this track previously. So what are your thoughts now as you're hearing this track again? It's really great. I mean, um, the the original track that I had heard about a month ago was was relatively the same, but I can already hear the improvements that he's added to it. So it's, it's just, it's also really nice as a, as a when you provide feedback and it's being implemented and then you're like oh, okay this this is it like this sounds great you know i'm not saying it's perfect because we you know but it's certainly uh yeah like it, it's definitely grown and it's it's really cool to see um 
there was a couple of things that I noticed and, and I'm trying to think back to what I originally said, but I can't recall all of it, but I, I tend to stick to the same kind of things every time I, I review, especially a rock track. Um, I noticed that the, uh, the clap, the clapping at the beginning of the track was a little distracting because it was, it was, it had a swing to it. So it was a little bit off from the beat, which is absolutely fine. But um, I just don't know if it was placed in the right, in the right place or the right part of the track. I think it could have, come a little bit later and when the bass I always try to when I do it I strip down the bass and drums I always add the tambourine to it because I find that it's a nice balance um, and so I think that when I heard the tambourine later on in the track I thought oh that should have been played maybe at the during that that bass kind of solo uh, bass line section um, so that was something that stuck out but I really liked how it was panned I liked the guitar panning on it and the guitar tone was actually really nice. And the leads, the leads sounded really good. They could have been a little bit louder, but I noticed that they they were pretty distinctive from the rhythm guitars, which I really like to hear because it allows for a lot of variety for the uh, for the track. And then uh, the only other thing I really that really stuck out. I, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying, Jesse, in terms of the energy and the, how it was composed. I think it was really great. Um, but the uh, the very ending again, I I love having an ending where there's a bit of a a delay or a, a decay, I should say, and with the guitars and just play it out, strum it out. Even if it lasts four or five seconds, it allows the libraries to work with it a little more and it gives a little more room for fading on projects. So you're giving them more meat essentially to play with. And uh, so for me, I always like, even if it's a rock track, I like ending it with a a note that resonates and decays a little bit naturally, a guitar strum, a cymbal crash, all, all of it together, just to give them more that they can work with, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. I mean, I want to make sure everybody's clear. Scott is talking about like a hit, like where you have a strum, a final root chord, and the guitars actually kind of fade out or you, you fade them out. Not that the whole track keeps going and you fade the whole track right. out musically. That's kind of the sort of, you know, old school 80s, how you end a track. So yeah. we don't do that kind of, I just want to make sure everybody was clear on that. But yeah, I think you were, you were, you were, Touching yeah, on exactly a natural a natural decay with let's say strumming the guitar, um, you know, it and it will last as long as it lasts, but at least it gives them something that they can manipulate on their end. Totally, very cool, understood. Yeah, um, and Philip, I know that you've done a lot of rock uh, in your career, so what did you think about this one? Yeah, man, I thought it was really cool. I thought the riff was really engaging right right from the top, and um, you know, got my head bobbing. And you know, if I had to be super nitpicky, because I think this is this is really licensable already. Um, the snare drum tone could be a little bit, have a little bit more pop. Um, and I think that's probably just a high end EQ thing, just opening up a little bit of the top end. It just kind of seemed a little flat to me at times. Um, and in some of these, uh, you don't know if it's the A part, B part, the drum part just kind of seemed a little bit like, um, like hi hat pattern is mainly where I noticed it, that it just, kind of sound like some of the same that we heard the first time this part came around. So a lot of times, you know, I'll just go in there and, and look at bars or however, just displace one of those beats or displace one snare drum or put a couple of open hi-hats in there. And it's the most subtle thing. But when you listen to a live drummer, when you go to a concert, I mean, they're back there vibing on it. And it's just every once in a while, you know, just just a little flavor and it sounds like a real person and which makes the real person listening to it, I think engage a little bit more. Um, and the only other note I had was some of the stops, um, which I thought were cool and well-placed and a great edit point um, for an editor, but it, it may also add some cool ear candy, you know, when you come in and, and have that stop on one to have some kind of, ear candy thing like you know just something that's another little little thing that's going to raise an eyebrow like cool drags me into the next part and uh and uh you know they can just take that out if they don't want to use it and they just want to use the the stop as is but all in all man i think great trek and uh well done Awesome. And yeah, I, I picked up on that hi-hat pattern too. I felt one idea I have for you too um, is to um, maybe on, especially on this kind of middle section when we have, we're kind of grooving on it quite a while is have hi-hats open on the one and the three. So, so it kind of gives us half tempo vibe to it. 
you know, so you're having the a high hit kind of giving you a little bit of a push pull feeling um, as we go into that second section. So definitely switching up the drums a little bit for sure. I could see one of the weaknesses there that could be improved upon. So yeah, I'm glad that you you pointed that out, man. Uh, Yele, um, I don't know how much rock music you've per performed or composed, but uh, I'm sure you have some thoughts um, for this one. I played in a rock band, to be honest, uh, back <laughs> in the day. Uh, but before I started composing uh, cinematic music, uh, but when I listen to this kind of music, and it's by the way, it's really well done. When I listen to this kind of music, I always get this romanticized version of rock musicians going to the studio and have this big equipment of and the you can do to emphasize on this is using a plugin I, which which I always use. It's called the RC20 Retroloc Color Plugin by Excellent Audio. And basically what it does is adding saturation to the track to make it a bit more warmer and give this analog feeling. And basically that's just the only thing I can think of uh, with this track. Uh, it, it's a, a nice tip. Um, for the rest, I have no uh, comments on this whatsoever. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I was noticing maybe not so much of the saturation, but I think that's a great point and maybe that would fix it i definitely noticed um the guitars weren't quite growling as much as i wanted them to i really wanted these guitars to be like nah, nah, you know like a wall of guitars hitting me and they felt a little timid they were kind of back there so that could be a volume issue that could be a distortion issue settings issue or maybe the saturation would completely take care of all of that in fact get, adding a little bit of that edginess to the entire track so that's a great suggestion yelly thank you man and hans how about anything that we maybe have missed didn't uh, cover yet well, uh, all of the above, it's really great. Uh, I, I was really enjoying it. I think you have a real great uh, legato style, and I love when you came in with your melody. And it sounds actually quite distinct, uh, the way you played that. I really, really like that. Uh, what A couple of points for me were that um, after, your, after you come in with your melody and you go out again, you come back to your riff, um, that is when I need something. That's actually when I need the tambourine in there. There needs to be something that lifts it there and distinguishes it from the very beginning. It's almost like you copy pasted that part. Um, and uh, the, the thing with the tambourine, if it comes in at the end, the sound of the tambourine for me is too, is too Christmassy. There is too, it's not, it's not rock enough. It's not cutting through in a way. It's kind of too, too wide in some way. It doesn't cut through for me. Uh, and then just one other thing was for me that your uh, the few drum breaks that you have, uh, they are they are too laid back for me. This feels more like an English style uh, uh, rock track. And the difference between kind of like the English, how they how they play and uh, uh, American rock is that the English are usually a little more upfront in their in their beat. They're not as laid back. You know, think about Stuart Copeland, even though Stuart Copeland is like heavy up front, that's not, not that far, but a little more, little more energetic up front. And for the end, uh, what I would use it, I would use kind of like a, a 16 triplet uh, uh, break where you go between your, your surfaces, right? Where it's like really interesting, where you kind of uh, uh, give me some a barrage of, of a drum break that ends in that one hit that Scott uh, uh, mentioned, you know, where you have a, a have it ring out with one hit on your guitar and then the crash cymbal. But overall, uh, very licensable. And, you know, like Jesse said, that that is a style that is usable in, in many, many different fields and uh, great job. Absolutely. Thank you, Hans. And thank you all you guys for your, your notes. I think one last note that I would give you, uh, Mauricio, is that you know, the first first half of the track, like I said, it definitely was building and doing it right. I felt like the last probably third of the track, you know, you have this lead guitar on there and it's kind of getting bigger and bigger in a way, but I feel like this riff is starting to really get played out a bit. And I, what I wanted to hear rather than kind of like, you know, it's kind of this riff, dun 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 You know, it's kind of just doing this over and over again. I kind of wanted to hear a B section where we start to start strumming on some chords and we kind of get into a little bit more of a, I don't know if you want to call it a melodic section. So this is kind of a riffy section, this riffy main riff thing you got going on here. But I wanted to hear more of like a bigger chorus kind of coming in to just take us a little bit on a different path for just a little while so that when we come back to this cool riff, it feels like a nice, hey, we're back home. We're right back where we are. So I feel like, um, you know, this track could probably be reworked as is to be licensable without having to add that. But I think moving forward, 
Um, if you're definitely gonna have kind of a riffy track like this, which is really centered on the riff, just make sure to, to provide that contrast and then not get stuck in a repetitive thing. Um, just make sure that it's like, all right, we got this riff going for eight bars, 16 bars. Let's really go somewhere else for a little while. Make sure it's connected. It's not completely a different, you know, vibe or a different emotion, but let's really like switch up the pattern of the guitars, switch up the patterns of the drums. Let's really go somewhere, have a little bit of a pause, a break, a departure, if you will. And then when we come back, it just feels like, ah, oh, we're back now in this cool groove. So I feel like we might have relied a little too much on the riffiness of this track and didn't really complete all of the musical development it probably could have had. So, um, but these are, I think everything that we're saying here, even though it sounds like we have a lot of notes, we are definitely saying that you are 80% of the way there, like 80 or 90% of the way there. You definitely have something really, really licensable. And again, our job here is to just try to push you a little further than maybe you would have pushed yourself. So hopefully you're taking that from this and everybody else watching that. That's really what this is about is it doesn't matter if you're brand new to producing and you need a lot of help. We have members that are, you know, they're brand new to producing or they've been producing for a while, but they still need just a lot of extra help and a lot of extra pushing to get them up to a point where it's going to be licensable. And then we have other members like Mauricio here that's, you're pretty much almost there, man. But we still, for everybody, we want to keep pushing you. And that's what we want to do with these uh, these notes that we give you guys in pro feedback. So as always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to get feedback on your tracks, uh, you can click on the link below and learn more about pro feedback and our really cool platform that we have going on here. So we'll catch you guys in the next review.